One of the reasons why it's particularly not interesting is because it's so um, static, it's not very dynamic. So one thing I'm going to do is to have a way of changing those table values over time. Um, basically using some uh, storage, using a, a, a system called Patter, P-A-T-T-R. The first thing we're going to want to do when we're dealing with Patter is to name the objects that we're interested in changing um, in the Patter system, because Patter deals with named objects, and to name an object, you can hold down your command um, on a Macintosh or Control on a PC, hold that key down while you hit apostrophe, I think that's what you call that, an apostrophe, the thing that you put up when, you, um, when you're typing like uh, theirs, and you know how to use the apostrophe S in the correct fashion, which of course I never do. And then it brings up the inspector asking for a scripting name. So I'll just call this on the first one, on the first table I'll call that beat one. Uh, we could just do it that way I guess, in case you didn't, couldn't find the uh, apostrophe key on your keyboard. If I bring up the inspector again, and I go all the way to the bottom there, scripting name, that next table I'll call that beat two, and this third table here, I'll just do it this way to make it more clear on the video. Scripting name is beat three. Great. And this last one over here, uh, inspector, scripting name is beat four. Quite awesome. All right. So the next thing we do um, is to use something, make a new object, and on my keyboard here, called auto patter, auto, all right. And what auto patter does, as soon as I um, make an auto patter, it basically finds all of the named objects in the patch. And the thing that's going to access those named objects is going to be a new object, and on my keyboard, called patter storage, okay. Um, and patter storage, I'm going to use a message called message store, so M on my keyboard for a new message store, uh, spell it right. S-T-O-R, and we're going to store um, in different indexes on that pad of storage, so store with the dollar one argument, and we need a number coming in here, so we need an integer box, that's I on my keyboard, for storing in different ind indexes, and one last thing, I'm going to use a float number to uh, access these stored um, presets if you like. So I'm going to use F on my keyboard to bring up a float box and I'll connect it up to my pad of storage like so. And let's just, uh, for the start, uh, let's store that one we just made there, that set of uh, table values. So put one over here. So that's stored now. Um, you can verify that you've got some values stored in here. Well you can see if you double click the pad of storage Object. You've got your beat 1, beat 2, beat 3, beat 4. If you don't have those, I guess you should rewind and check it out. Um, and then uh, let's, let's change some of those values. So I'll just, uh, hey, get out of here. So I'm just going to change some of these. So now um, my beat 1 might look like this. So I might just make things quieter or more, more likely to be silent uh, as I change from the first preset to the second, so here's these ones and here we'll make we'll make our kick even likelier to come in here and and we'll make this one virtually uh, well we'll make it so it always does that or something like that. Alright, so now um, when I uh, store this second value here, so that's now my second slot in my in my preset, in my patter storage, and I can, let's uh, just verify that, well, we don't even need to run anything here to show that when I click on this number, this float number, there's, it should bring up my first um, stored uh, preset, one, and then slowly go off towards the second one as I go towards two, yeah, something like that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of convinced. Anyway, I'll check out how that sounds and put it on.
well, you can tell it makes it more, fills it up with more silence. Anyway, you can play around with all this stuff. This is quite a lot to introduce in one tutorial. And uh, the only thing that I'll just say before I leave, when you close this, well, you might want to save it first, like save as, um, you know, save as, hello, hello. Um, when you close it, it'll come up with this uh, dialog box, which is going to try and save an XML file. That's the XML file associated with the patch that you uh, with the um, patter storage that you just made, so you can um, save your save that preset when you close Max. All right, and you can see them. Hey, they're even there on my desktop. All right, well, have great fun with that, and I'll see you in the next one.